The next video is uh, an interview with the three Tigner sisters. Uh, the Tigner sisters were the daughters of the man who helped uh, Edwin Ansley develop Ansley Park uh, beginning in 1904. Uh, you'll see Martha Tigner Blackman, Jeanette Tigner, and Adelaide Tigner Linden. The thing that is, in my view, so great about these interviews is that these women uh, were obviously in their 80s uh, when they gave the uh, interviews in 1992, but they give a real humorous and personal depiction of what life was like in Ansley Park. Really at about the first time automobiles uh, were uh, being driven in Ansley Park. And of course, Ansley Park was the first neighborhood in Atlanta that was developed with the idea that the automobiles would be used uh, to get from here to downtown, to five points in downtown Atlanta. Uh, the Tigner sisters have a great interaction with each other, a great chemistry, uh, but they also give you a sense of what it was like at the earliest part of the 20th century to grow up in Ansley Park. So I think you'll enjoy listening to the Tigner City sisters. They are delightful women and are a real part of the history of Ansley Park. So enjoy listening and seeing the Tigner sisters. Well, our father was J. Hope Tignan, came to Atlanta and was connected with Mr. Edwin P. Ansley in the development of Ansley Park. And um, our house and the Ansley home um, and the house next to us were all built at the same time, about 1910. And it, the houses were, the, the, governor, the Ansley home, which later became the governor's mansion, was quarried uh, over in the Ansley Golf Club. There was a little quarry over there. Uh, it's part of Stone Mountain Strata that runs through there. And um, so that was, uh, uh, his house was made of granite and our columns on our porch at 27 Maddox Drive was uh, granite. And so was the, ha was the house next door. And Mr. Ansley uh, was so wonderful that he gave so much property to the park for just parks, like uh, the now the McClatchy Park and Wynn Park. And it made the, we were talking about the uh, man who was the landscaper and uh, the layout of the land was Mr. Ruff. And uh, somebody asked him, why do you make Ansley Park with all these streets running around? He said, well, anybody can draw a straight line, but it takes an artist to make a curve. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but anyway, um, we, uh, our house was, uh, was built in 1910, and uh, Jeanette was born in 1911. And I think you were the first first little girl baby born in Ansley Park, and, uh, which was wonderful. For me, I didn't know it was so wonderful, but it was. That's but, our claim to fame. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But, um, but do you want to talk about uh, Mr. Ansley himself? I mean, memories that you had of him? You well, um, oh, of him? he was a yes. wonderful developer. He, he developed the Ansley Hotel, which later became the Dinkler Hotel downtown. And also, uh, he went to Cuba. In fact, Daddy and he went together to Cuba. He, had, he was thinking of developing some in Cuba and also in Florida. He was a multimillionaire. But he, uh, like developers do, he got overextended, particularly at the wrong time, in, particularly in Florida, and in the 20s, and he lost a lot at that time. But um, Ansley Park has remained good because it is a circular uh, place, and that um, the, the air here is so much better years ago because we didn't have air conditioning but uh, the, if you rode down Peace Street and turned at 15th Street and came into Ansley Park it was at least 10 degrees cooler mm -hmm. 
and that was because it was not built as straight up and down streets, you know. But um, were there many trees here? Oh, the, the here? place was just full of trees, and of course, uh, Collier Woods was uh, over where now is Sherwood Forest. And that was a perfectly wonderful place. Every Sunday afternoon we used to take walks through the park, through the woods there. It was just a ripe with a, a wild azaleas and dogwood and violets. And of course when they built Sherwood Forest, they went in and just <laughs> tore down all the trees and people had to replant, but uh, it was a beautiful uh, forest of virgin woods. And I think Beverly Road was the first road to be built before the rest of Sherwood Forest. But um, Can you talk about the Walker Farm? Um, that we, I know about the Walker Farm was uh, where the driving club is, but I don't know how big it was or anything like that. But of course Walker Terrace is named Walker Terrace for the Walker uh, Farm. And, um, Many of the streets, I, I believe I'm right in this, it, uh, Mr. Angley was so intrigued with Havana, with their big wide boulevards, that I think that's one reason why the Prado was probably named the Prado, was from the Spanish influence. And then of course having a Avery Drive is another big wide boulevard. When they paved the streets here, we just had uh, rocky streets, they were not um, fixed in any way uh, before they were paved and uh, when they did pave them, why that was a marvelous time. We had so many children who lived here because Andrew Park was the most northern subdivision and everybody walked to Spring Street School and we walked everywhere and the cars were just few and far between at that time. But, um, do you want to talk about the electric car again? That was wonderful. Um, our neighbor, Mrs. Carmen, who she was actually, their home was the first house on Ansley Park. I think it, it was across the street from us and was probably a number about 46, something like that. But anyway, she had an electric car and it was just darling. And uh, she would uh, come by and ring the bell in front of our house, and particularly Jeanette and I, we were younger. We would race out and get in the car to ride in that electric car. And she would take it up to ease, kind of ease up. You know, electric cars are really smooth. And uh, they'd ease up to Peachtree Circle. And uh, she would wait for her husband, who was the uh, reader at the Christian Church, Christian Science Church. And he would be on the car line coming home. And she'd wait for him and, and then take him home. But they, you drove the electric car with a bar instead of a wheel. You, you did it like, like, like this. But anyway, um, that was just great fun to ride in that. Talk about his outfit. I love that. Oh, and, uh, yeah, this, uh, we called him Dad. There were no relation to us at all. But uh, he was a reader, and he wore a top hat and, and a morning suit and spats. And he just looked wonderful coming there, getting in that little electric car. He was so cute. But um, we just we just had a lot of fun in Angley Park. We at one time we had a, a before the streets were paved. Um, we had snakes out here, and Jeanette and I were almost um, we had a run in with a big rattlesnake coming down the black bank from Ansley Drive, Montgomery Ferry. And um, she had run, we were going down to the Commons, and um, she had now, run where was the Commons? The Commons were the one with the little oh, electric the, car. The, the, the and only car, only house on the street over there. Anyway, she had gone ahead and I was hollering to wait for me and I ran across the street and then we both saw this huge rattlesnake coming down and we hollered to our mother on the porch and she said stand still don't move a muscle and the snake just went right between us and we had a workman there that came up and killed him but that was our exciting time with the snake. The Ansley Park Civic League was begun I think around 1914 or 15 and um, 
uh, I don't know that Mr. McClatchy and Daddy were officers at that particular time, but they were for many years. Uh, Mr. McClatchy was president, Daddy was nearly always secretary and treasurer. And they would, either one of them, Daddy was in the cotton business, the cotton exchange downtown, because Mr. McClatchy was a lawyer. And they would, either one who had the time, would go by the courthouse and see if there was any petition there that would be detrimental to Ansley Park. And then they'd come back and one would take one side of the uh, park and the other one would take the other and call them up. And they'd, at the hearing, they'd have three, four, five hundred people down there to uh, cancel the, whatever it, you know, do away with, with the petition. And one of the things that uh, um, was petitioned, because they, they really kept Angley Park from having any stores or filling stations, particularly a few apartments did get in, but, but most of what, it was to be a residential place. And um, the, uh, one thing, I don't know whether I've mentioned it or not, but that uh, Mr. Arkwright was president of Georgia Power Company, and they had the jurisdiction over the streetcars. They were electric streetcars in the city and uh, he wanted to uh, build, put streetcar tracks all through Ansley Park. Well, they had about, I don't know how many people down there to stop that. And they asked Mr. Uh, um, Arkwright if he would give them a little bus to come through Ansley Park, take people downtown. And he said, nope, if you don't want my tracks, can't have a bus. So a little independent bus company started the bus and took everybody downtown and made so much money that the Georgia Power Company bought it. <laughs> and then later they did have trackless trolleys through Ansley Park and they were not too satisfactory because there were a lot of wires at the top and in the winter time we'd have a terrible time with the, the uh, wires and the ice getting on them. And, doing something to the, uh, the, the buses we couldn't run, you know. Our Christmas at home were fantastic. We were so excited every Christmas. And the school closed a week before Christmas. So in that time, we decorated our house with greens. And then we uh, went out on Christmas Eve to get our tree. All of us went. And we had, uh, we got the saw and the hatchet, and we had a little wagon, and we went out to try to find the prettiest tree out here, which we did. And we brought it back that night, that afternoon, and decorated that night. We had the tinsel and the uh, cranberry strings and the popcorn, and of course the star on top. We had a wonderful time. We spent so much time and that week before Christmas, buying little presents and we got something for everybody. And the funniest thing was hiding them so nobody could find them. <laughs> Jim and I got our bicycles. That was a time when it was, they were hard to get. We didn't know anything about it. And Martha and Jeanette got uh, dolls and doll carriages. And we just, and of course we hung stockings on the mantelpiece for of those white rib stockings, and they were, they were filled with fruits, all the fruits, apples and bananas, and the sticky raisins down in the toe. They really lighted up, and you see over the governor's mansion, I think Doc, uh, Mr. McClatchy was one that started that, uh, the Santa Claus going over the uh, governor's mansion, and it was, we had some traffic out here, we couldn't get out of our driveway just bumper to bumper all around here. It was just really a sight to behold. We, we were never afraid of anything happening to us. And um, when we, uh, sometimes on Friday night, Daddy and Mama and all of us would walk up to Road Center now and catch the car line and go downtown and there was a wonderful restaurant downtown that everybody went to. It was called the Daffodil. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know where it was, really, but it was just a great place to go. And we'd go have dinner at the Daffodil and then go to a show. 
And uh, then we'd come back, we'd, have, we'd get home walking all the way from Peachtree Circle down to Maddox Drive at 12, 1230 at night. We were just walking and there were no cars running, you know, I mean, we didn't have to worry about traffic. And uh, in fact, um, there was one funny thing about Christmas that uh, Jeanette and I wanted a bicycle later. And, and we were too little to get one when they got one. And so Mama and Daddy said, oh, no, not now. Too much traffic. <laughs> and of course, it was just about one car every 10 minutes or so. <laughs> I'll tell you so. that uh, during the, when the, uh, World War I was, uh, Daddy would work, he worked by moonlight and built a wonderful garden all around the curb. Oh yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Tell more about that. That was that's just great. It, he worked all, all half the night digging and planting. We had tomatoes and corn and everything planted all ran up here. It went circle. from it went from our house all up to the end of the yeah. circle up here. Uh -huh. And um, that was that was a war garden. A lot of people had the, the war garden. Yeah, well, well, explain what a war garden is. Well, it was just to have uh, vegetables and fruits of your own where you wouldn't have, have to, to go get them. Go get them. The tomatoes things. were this big. Uh, there was shortage, you know, of fruits and things like that. And um, so uh, there was one thing we remembered um, was the when the fire in Atlanta, the big fire in Atlanta over on Boulevard and so forth, well, we were small children, but that was probably in 1917, I think, and uh, we were taken up to the Ansley home to watch the fire. On the roof. And we could, we uh, stood up there, we could see the great big red glow, and of course, Daddy and all the, most all of the men in Atlanta, really, uh, the real uh, people who were interested uh, were deputized, uh, deputized, I don't know whether I'm saying that right, but anyway, they were uh, to go over and keep the um, looters or anybody else from, uh, uh, you know, doing anything. We've heard some funny stories about what people did at the fire, that they would throw out the lamps and then take a pillowcase out, out say everybody was so arms. nervous. They were so nervous, you know, they, they were just, it was an awful uh, thing. We, I, would, I was probably just, well, 17, four years old, but I still remember seeing that red glow. But, uh, oh, and they dynamited every other house to stop it, stop the, stop the fire. And up when we were up on the roof, we could see the house just blow up, and then another house a uh, little down full. Everybody thought the Germans set it on fire. Yeah, they thought that was because the we were fighting the Germans then. Yeah, it wasn't Nazis; it was Germans. You see, we knew everybody here. We all went to Spring Street School in our ages, and. Uh, and we, we just did things together, we played together. And we, a lot of times for entertainment at night, we'd go to somebody's house and somebody always could play the piano and we'd stand around and sing, you know. And, and then on the porches, and a lot of times, I remember one time um, at our house, we had a great big swing. And Adelaide had uh, a couple of dates out there with a ukulele, and uh, Jeanette and I were peeping through the curtains to watch, <laughs> watch them. And, uh, but anyway, you know, it was just an easy time, and we had, um, we played tennis down at the uh, park, and there was a little swimming pool down there. I don't know whether mm -hmm. you know that, okay. but we call it the bathtub. It wasn't very big, and uh, we but we got, went down there all the all summer. We went swimming down there, and uh, then we used to go over to Piedmont Park. Was good too. We were, it was nice for people to go over there, and we'd have picnics over there. We have pictures of our mother and daddy and all of us sitting around by the lake there having a picnic. It, it was a nice uh, addition to Ansley Park at that time. But there was so many beautiful homes along Peachtree. 
right at 15th Street that uh, was the McRae home, Dr. McRae, and uh, then the high where the museum is was the home of, of the highs, J.M. High. They owned a department store down on Whitehall Street. And when they, uh, when she died, the last one died, they left their house to the um, uh, museum, to be a museum. And it was a museum. They had paintings in it at that time. And then later, of course, the, uh, after the oil crash in Paris, they built the Memorial Hall and then later the High Museum. A lot of people have said that they thought High Museum was just high art, you know, the top. But it was named after the you know, highs, J.M. High Company people. They had a Tudor style house. And, uh, but all, all along Peace were beautiful homes. And you, you know, because we, no one left now is the, uh, the historical place, the Rhodes home up here. But um, the Edmonds, the, one of the first Edmond home was uh, at Postelin and Peachtree, and that was a granite home. I don't know whether that was Ed Edmond or one of one of the Edmonds. And um, but I don't know. We just we had so much fun, you know. We take walks through Collier Woods. That was so, so pretty, and um, and we just uh, we had a horseshoe rink in our backyard and have tournaments and all that kind of business. All of us were sort of athletic. We liked to play tennis and go swimming and everything. Uh, Ansley has, has gone through several phases. Uh, first was the everybody knew coming in as the city was moving north. As I mentioned, this was most northern uh, subdivision. And um, they were new couples with children and grew up and built nice, sturdy homes. And um, then later, of course, in uh, uh, World War II probably was the beginning of having some boarding houses in Anzi Park because uh, all of the men were off at war, you know, and everybody was doing something in connection with it. and. Uh, Maybe a, a family had a big house and the husband was gone and so they took in a few people. That went, that we went through that and, and that sort of lasted a while uh, into the um, 50s, I'd say, uh, the late 40s after the war was over in 45 and 46. And late, late 40s and early 50s, there was that to contend with, but I think the Civic League has done a beautiful job in recent years um, to bring Ansley Park back to the original idea of one family homes rather than boarding houses. And uh, I, we, we just marvel at how well the park looks now. It looks really good. And it, uh, as far as the future, I think, in, uh, of course, we are also marvel at the price of the houses, and of course, our house was sold at just the wrong time, <laughs> and uh, now that house would sell for, uh, I imagine, well, most of them are selling now, I think, from 300000 to a million. We've had a couple of millions here, and um, so uh, it, it has... Uh, changed that way, but people have really done a lot to uh, keep up the places and do them over where they needed to be done over. And uh, I think the future looks good. I think it looks uh, like um, we've got the same caliber of people in the park that we had originally. And uh, the, um, the, the park is always uh, seem to uh, gather people of substance. We always had professional people here, doctors, lawyers, and architects, and other business people, but there was always that um, 
feeling that it was something special. And uh, that was the, the reason for trying to keep it special and keep the stores out and the filling stations out and all that. So it, it, uh, to me, I think it's the best place in town. Mm -hmm. I think this whole area, and then to have the uh, IBM, the beautiful IBM building, and all these others right where we can, you can see it from nearly every house in Angley Park. And of course, we live up at the Reed House now, and we are right across the street, so we just uh, really enjoy the, the way it's developed. I think, I think the way Midtown has developed has been wonderful because it could have gone. It was, you know, kind of uh, had a lot of little stores. Of course, early on, up at 10th Street, was a very nice little section. Way back when we were, we were growing up, we were not especially children, but we were uh, young people. But they had uh, the school had theaters up there and the uh, uh, grocery stores and Woolworth and all. You know, it was a it was a gathering place for just people from all over this area. The Civic League is sort of the key to keeping everybody advised about what's going to happen in An in Ansley Park and what they ought to do about it because that was what kept it really. See, they had the Civic League back in 19 or whatever, 14 or 15, mm -hmm. and that was really the key to keeping it good at that time, and it has worked that way all through the years, even at the bad times. It, it, it has held the, the park as a, a unit of families that want to live here and enjoy uh, the space and the t and places where they live and the people. I think we've always had a grand group of people here. We enjoy looking out our window at the Reed House and seeing so many people walking. See, we are walkers because we had to way back, but uh, we see uh, around Peachtree Circle people walking, uh, running, uh, people with carriages and babies, and it's just just really an eye-opener, and you don't see that in any other section in Atlanta. You, uh, there are no sidewalks out in Habersham and West Andrews and so forth, and the sidewalks have been the saving grace, I think, of people getting out and using the park as a, as a place to enjoy. And, and going, we, we, we comment on that a lot, that people are still doing that. <laughs> now, Miss Jeanette, I want you to tell me. <laughs> I, I, what, I come and I sit down and I say, oh, Miss Jeanette, tell me how we can keep Ansley as good as it was and as good as it is today. Well, the main thing is to get people out to where you feel like that you can, you know, live in this house forever. But the best thing is that you get out, and as you get out, you get out to know what is happening to the park itself, which we would know going back to the times when we were just born here. But um, it has just a, a degree in it that it just makes it smell real sweet and real good, and they want to continue that to go. And I think that's what it will do. And what about you, Madeline? Well, I'll tell you. It's a homey place. I live in a retirement place now. I'm out at Camelstone. And it's real great to come back and ride around and see Angley. It's just wonderful.